Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Precision Pharmacy is family owned and operated with 58 years of experience in pharmacy with five locations throughout New York State offering next day shipping or pickup is available. 90 LDN capsules are $40. Phone 516 785 4774 extension 2 or visit precisionpharmacy.net. I'd like to welcome my guest today, Dr. Christian Stella, who's a pharmacist from New York. Thank you for joining us today, Christian. Hey, thank you very much for having me, Linda. I appreciate it. Could you tell us your background, please? Of course, of course. So, Linda, for me, it's, it's a little bit more of bloodline. So um, my, my great-grandfather was a pharmacist. He lived in, in Brooklyn, and he started his own pharmacy. Then it went down to my grandfather. And um, my grandfather's more of a, he's, he's basically a mechanism of action wizard. So he's 80, 83 years old today, and I can really go up to him and, and ask him, hey, what's the mechanism of action of second generation cephalosporin? And he'll know. He is really, really good. So came down to him, and then after my grandfather, he opened the first store. Um, it was called Stella's Pharmacy. And it was in Canarsie, Brooklyn. It, they opened in 1959. So he opened that store, and we, pretend, we eventually grew. Um, then, then we got up, get up to my, my father. My father is the business aspect. He, he really um, he was a technician, but he got into more growing the business and going out and talking and, and really experienced the, whole, the full pharmacy experience. Then my, my uncle, my aunt... My other aunt, they're all pharmacists. They all went to St. John's University. So at that time, I knew it was my time. I was all ready to go to St. John's when I was a a little guy, 18 years old. So I went to St. John's, um, and it was fantastic. I learned so much. But after I came out of St. John's, I knew we had a family business. And at this point, it's grown to um, we have a store in Long Beach. We have a store in Bell Harbor. Great Neck and a long-term facility care in Farmingdale. So at this time, I came in, and it did, although I can just go into the family business, there wasn't really, um, there wasn't, it w- it wasn't something that I was looking to just jump right into. So we we get, began we began talking to some of our mentors and and people in the compounding business and i always thought that compounding was very interesting after i took my new york state boards in compounding i knew it was it was the the route i wanted to go and i used to as a little kid i used to collect my great grandfather's um pharmacy antiques so i had a a little package of benzocaine i had a little scale a uh triple beam balance so it was something that just felt right and it fit. And I met a couple of fantastic mentors that I really, I still talk to today. And they really guided me in that compounding direction. And then I started, started uh, a precision compounding business with my mentors. And, and here I am today. Wow. How about that? What a story. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your facilities that you have, are they sterile and non-sterile? So the the compounding facility that we have right now that that one is in Belmore, and currently it's it's not sterile, it, but we are updating to USP 800. When we update to USP 800, we have the plans, and we're all ready. So that will be at the end of the summer. We'll be doing sterile, but mm-hmm. as far as right now, we're not doing sterile. Okay, for any patients listening, they might be thinking, ah, oh, it's not sterile, but 
explain what a sterile facility actually means. Of course, of course. So it's being, being sterile is just keeping your product. There, there was a, there was a, a long-term, uh, about a, a couple of years ago, 10 years ago, they, they were doing injectables, injectables, IM, sub-Q, and the products weren't completely sterile. So what happens is when there's a couple um, antibacterials that come into the sterile preparation, if you inject it into a human body, they can get diseases. So that's what happened a very long time ago. So after that, they, they cracked down and they started a USP 797 plan, and every single pharmacy had to be completely sterile. But sterile, the separation of sterile and non-sterile is just sterile is more injectables mm -hmm. and IM. So anything that's going directly into the body, uh, but we don't do that right now. We're just focused on non-sterile, which is your capsules, you have your creams, your, um, your suspensions, your suppositories, your trochees, your sublingual. So all of those different formulations can be done in a non-sterile uh, compounding pharmacy. Mm -hmm. But of course, your facility is still inspected it has to be clean and hygienic and tested so that all your products are of a very high quality of course of course and a lot of our our products are checked by eagle analytics so we send out um about every three or four months all of our products to eagle mm -hmm. to be checked and and to to make sure that we are measuring and we are calculating the the proper formulations for our ingredients that we're making. So our formulations they have um, they need to be within 10% uh, error. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure it's done like that. So we send it out to get checked. So everything is everything is completely done. Um, we have systems. We have a software system that that checks over every single, it actually hooks up, the computer hooks up to the scale where the pharmacists are weighing out the materials. So you physically cannot weigh anything over or under what the formulation states. Mm -hmm. So everything is uh, completely flawless. Wonderful. And of course, the placebo effect is very strong with some people. Um, I know pharmacists who decided, OK, we would like to differentiate between our three milligram capsules and our 4.5, so we'll make them different colours. Nothing else had changed. The formula was the same. The quality checks were the same. There was three milligrams in the three, and there was 4.5, same filler, same mm -hmm. everything. And yet there were quite a few people who complained that they didn't feel as good. They, it, it, it didn't work as well, oh. um, purely because the capsules were a different colour. Of course, of course. Yeah, so we're playing, we're really playing some mind games with, and we, that's something we do with our low-dose naltrexone patients. We do obviously op offer a vegetarian capsule, and that's going to be clear. But for each strength, we have the 1 milligram, the 1.5, the 2. We can go all the way up to 4.5, all the way up to 8. But we do um, every single... Every single milligram uh, strength is going to be in a different color capsule, uh -huh. uh, just mm -hmm. so just so we know that we're dispensing the proper medication. Everything's going out, but it just makes it easier for us and the patients. Mm -hmm. And plus, some of the patients they love the color choice. They love everything um, when when they see it. Just it looks very professional mm -hmm. when when a uh, capsule is, is green and and black instead of it being just clear. Mm -hmm. And of course, they. Rest, be rest assured, if the three milligrams is meant to be red, let's say, and they've got a red one, they know without a shadow of, of a doubt. Of course. Yeah. There you what, go. What doses of course. it is, yes. So what formulations do you use for your LDN? Yeah, so um, we, we really, we do the capsules. Mm -hmm. So 
we're like I said, we're doing the vegetarian capsules and the fillers um, is Avacel, which is microcrystalline cellulose. We're also um, doing acidophilus for some patients. We we have a actually have a couple of patients that are doing uh, uh, we do olive oil extra virgin olive oil preparations and we we do a slight drip um, of olive oil into their capsule using that as the filler. We we do titration kits. Tablets will be in the future, hopefully, if everything goes as planned. But when it comes down to the creams, we we have uh, vaginal preparations mixed with scream cream with, when we use the naltrexone. We also have uh, pain creams. We do a lot of – we have a, a special division here at Precision Pharmacy. It's called ProScripts, and we deal with prop, most most likely the whole – um, MLB, so the Major League Baseball teams, we dispense to the the trainers, the training staff, the doctors, and we have pain creams and certain naltrexone, even naltrexone capsules that we dispense to these professional um, players, even the NBA, the NFL. So we're doing those in creams, and then a top, we do the topical cream for autism patients, as well as liquids, trochees, RDTs. We're pretty much doing it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you do a sublingual, do you as well? Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct, we do. Uh, because explain to people um, the difference of the absorption from um, a capsule to the sublingual. Of course. So when when a, a low-dose naltrexone preparation capsule goes through when you ingest it, it actually has to go through the GI system. And there's something called first pass metabolism. So that's when this naltrexone, this very small little dose of naltrexone, actually has to get all the way through the gut and it needs to get broken down by um, different enzymes. Now, when you go sublingual, you go, usually it's under the tongue, it might be buccal, so in the cheek. When it goes in that route, it's actually going to just go straight into the bloodstream. So it's a little bit different. Sometimes I know with naltrexone, it, shoot, it peaks up very quickly and it drops down with the sublingual. So it's a quick onset and, and then it's totally out of your system. But with the capsules, they, they stay for a little bit longer half-life when you're dealing with naltrexone. But there's a couple of different, little differences. Now, when we're dealing with patients and we're, we're having compliance issues, if a patient doesn't want to take a capsule for some reason, we can, um, we can actually do the sublingual. So um, whether we have um, uh, a child or a, um, a, a patient that just doesn't like taking capsules, we can do a sublingual preparation. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there are people with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or experienced gut issues with taking LDN. Of course. If they then take the sublingual, 99.9% of people don't have that issue anymore for the same reason that you said, that it actually is absorbed differently. So, you know, that that is good that uh, you do the sublingual. And you talk about pain, and uh, do you do the ultra low dose naltrexone? Something quite new that's happening. There's a big buzz. Oh yeah, yeah. We've been seeing it very, very recently now. So it's um, it's something that I haven't seen. Uh, probably about two year, two to three years ago, I didn't see any of them. But recently, I actually filled a prescription um, last month for one. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're we're seeing that really because the whole opioid crisis, yes. and we're really trying to get these patients off of these opioids. Um, and we do see it. We really do see it in our sports medicine side because when you need to, when you're in a major league organization, you need to sign up with let's just say it's the MLB. You need to sign up with the MLB beforehand and tell them that you're on a pain medication. Um, right when the season starts. So if they're on something and they don't want to be on it throughout the whole season, they have to taper off. So we're actually, we would be doing these, these ultra, ultra low dose naltrexones. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can either do it, we could do it in a capsule, which is going to be 50, I've seen 50 micrograms, um, maybe even 100 micrograms. 
I know there's there's lower. I've I've heard that there's lower, but I haven't personally done anything like that. But we also offer the liquid for that reason. Mm -hmm. We do a very very um, small dose. Well, there are many pain specialists um, prescribing ultra-low dose exactly for what you were saying for the opioid crisis. Now, you, you can um, some of these pain specialists are seeing patients that have been on high doses of opioids for 20 years and through no fault of their own, they are addicted to these um, medications. And they have to the prescribers have to get the patients off well to go through all the awful withdrawals but by using the ultra low dose in micro dosing by using like uh, 0 0.001 alongside of the opioids it makes the opioids far more effective and work better which means that the patient can start to taper off the opioid and i would say do not try this yourself. It has to be done with medical supervision. Um, so they slowly titrate up the microdose of the uh, ultra-low dose naltrexone whilst decreasing the amount of the opioids. And they manage to get these patients off the opioids without going through any withdrawal. And they're on LDN and many of them are reporting that they have less pain on the LDN than they did on the cocktail of opioids that they were on. So that just blows me away. I think that's totally amazing. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And we, we know this. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm a big mechanism of action person. I have to see that mechanism to understand the drug. Now, we, we know that they're, latch, they're completely dealing with that whole, um, the whole dextro side of the chirality is is completely taking over that TLR receptor and the glial cells are being antagonized. So you know exactly what it's doing when you're doing it at those ultra low doses. And it's fascinating, it, especially in a time like this today when we're we're dealing it's a, it's a huge we we have we obviously have our retail pharmacies as well. And I I see the pharmacists that I deal with um, uh, that that work at these regular retail pharmacies every day, and they are completely fed up with with the whole situation because they have these patients coming in, um, and they are completely they are completely hooked, and they want to do whatever they can to help them. But there's there's not so much you can do when you have a patient um, that's completely hooked. It, it it really is a terrible situation. Mm, definitely but it always seems to me if you've got terrible pain that's on a scale of 10 which I mean is the worst you can have by using the opioids uh, the um, morphine and the fentanyl and combination of different um, pain medications seems as though you know you're bringing in the really big boys but when you're using the ultra low dose this micro dosing of ldn it seems as though you're tickling it with a feather <laughs> exactly exactly doesn't it? you know it's funny you said that i like to look at it you know when i think of low dose naltrexone i tell my staff this all the time i think of it as an all-terrain vehicle like a little a little truck that can that is such a low dose but yet it can get put it it, it goes into these situations like it could go off road, it could go in the snow, it could go in the sleet, it could go anywhere, and it could completely take over. It's it's so funny you said that, but that's the the way I think of low dose naltrexone. Mm -hmm. And so we have well, LDN has evolved over the years, hasn't it? I mean, initially it was most people with MS, and then it became. Um, for fibromyalgia and Crohn's disease and Hashimoto's thyroid conditions and pain and infertility. And it's just and, um, mental health issues too. Mm. The use of it is just phenomenal. I mean, there are over 240 conditions that we know of at the moment. I think there's 243, something like that. But that list is just growing the whole time 
you know, it, it was originally saying if a condition had an autoimmune component, LDN could possibly help. But there are people who have rheumatoid arthritis, or that ticks the box, that's autoimmune. But then there are people taking it for osteoarthritis, which, as we know, isn't autoimmune. It's where the joints uh, rub on each other, isn't it, and, and wear away. Yet these people are getting relief as well. Um, I've been doing this 15 years, and you do not stop learning. You know, it's a big learning curve all the time and more exciting. I mean, what would you think would be the next thing with LDM? It's, it, to be honest with you, it's 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 limitless. It's it's something that, um, I mean, it's the closest thing to a miracle. I, I don't know if you ever heard. I I don't believe in miracles. I depend on him. That's the certain situation you're you're dealing with when you get low dose naltrexone. Personally, when when I started, it it was it was really just that MS um, population. And but now, now it's you see it for for sexual dysfunction, autism, weight loss, it, dep- even depression, and and like I said earlier, the mechanism is it's, it really is fascinating how it, how it can do so many work with so many catecholamines and 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 hit so many different receptors. So it really is. I won't be surprised if we're seeing in the next couple of years more and, and more conditions that we're using this low-dose naltrexone for. Um, and I know that they're doing research and they're, um, there's a couple of companies looking into it, but this is, is just the – it's really – it's been for a while, but this is just the beginning. Mm. It really is. I think so too. And there are um – Pharmacies that are also using it in eye drops, which is really mm. interesting for dry eye. Correct. And um, I've forgotten what I was going to say now. Yeah, now eye drops would be that would be a sterile preparation. So exactly. as of now, yeah, we're not we're not doing that. But I have heard I have heard of that mm-hmm. several times, several times. Yeah, and of course it's being used in. Um, for people in the military, not only for pain, but phantom limb pain um, mm. and post-traumatic stress. It's working amazingly well for that. And, of course, you don't have to be in the military to suffer from um, post-traumatic stress. I mean, it's rape victims as well, um, domestic abuse, all kinds of people that find that they fall into that category. Uh, and I think that's just so amazing because some of these people end up on medications that make them feel quite unlike themselves, should we say, where LDN doesn't have that effect, does it? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, you, you, do, have, you do have your essential side effects with LDN. I'm sure you know, you heard a hundred times, but it's, it's very well tolerated, um, we don't, we don't, I, I mean, for the most part, we, we do have our side effects and then we, there's ways around it, ways to adjust the dosing. That's why it's such, such an, and especially with compounding, you, you, that's the definition, customizing a formulation is really the, def, the definition of compounding. So if you have a patient in a certain situation, they need a higher dose, lower dose, a compounder can do that. That's, it really is fascinating. Mm-hmm. So your pharmacies, people in the New York area can obviously contact you. Do you ship outside of the um, New York? We do. Um, th- I was talking about that ProScripts division earlier. That That is connected to our building. So we are, because of them, and we're, we're the same entity, we are licensed to go all, all around the United States because we're, we're getting it to all these different teams around, around the United States. Mm-hmm. So, yes. And how do people, where do they find you to come and see you if they want to talk to you or talk to you on the phone? How do they get hold of you? Oh, very easy. So you can go, 
patients out there, they can go on to Precision Compounding. Oh, I'm sorry, PrecisionPharmacy.net, and then we actually have all of our locations up there. They just need to click that compounding button, and and all the information's on on the website. They can also call us at five one six. 785-4774, hit extension 2 for compounding, and I'll be willing to help you and assist. Um, also, we have the email compounding at precisionpharmacy.net. That's compounding at precisionpharmacy.net. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. So we're pretty much out there um, every, every sort of avenue mm -hmm. we can. And if people actually want to come and see you in person, whereabouts would they find you? Of course. So uh, the, the compounding facility is in Belmore. So that's 2640 Merrick Road in Belmore, 11710. And uh, they can come in. We have, that, we have the retail pharmacy here. They can ask for Christian. I'll come down. I'll talk to them. Whatever, whatever they need, I'll be able to, um, to help them out. Uh, but that's that's where they can find us at the at the Belmore location. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. Well, thank you very much for having been my guest today. We we've come to the end of the show. Is there anything you would like to say before we finish? No, that's that's pretty much it. I really really um, thank you for having me, and I I um, really love everything you're doing. Thank you so much, Linda. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Precision Pharmacy is family owned and operated with 58 years of experience in pharmacy with five locations throughout New York State offering next day shipping or pickup is available. 90 LDN capsules are $40. Phone 516 785 4774 extension 2 or visit precisionpharmacy.net Any questions or comments you may have please email me linda l i n d a at ldnrt.org I look forward to hearing from you Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.